everybody, thanks for tuning into this episode. Actually, it's the first technical first episode of Thrive Life Active, and I'm here at the Bangkok Fight Lab. You can see Rich Franklin, former UFC champion and now vice president of one championship out of Asia behind me getting ready. They're having some open tryouts today for a new reality show they're having where Rich is going to be traveling all throughout Asia looking for the next great one championship fighter out of Asia. So it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have some video coming up. We're going to have some video of the, um, the stuff that's going on as well as a one-on-one -on -one interview with Rich talking all things Asia MMA. So that should be a lot of fun. Hope you guys enjoy this. It only makes sense to have Rich on for the first episode of Thrive Life Active as he was also the first ever guest on my Thrive Life podcast. He was the first ever person to do a video podcast with me as well. So basically we've come full circle here and yet again we're having Rich Franklin kick it off. Hope you guys enjoy this. Thrive Life Active. If you enjoy it, please share it with your friends that are into fitness, MMA, or anybody who's just got an interest in mixed martial arts, maybe in Asia period, Muay Thai, stuff like that. Hope you guys enjoy it. So we're getting a little bit of special access. You can see all the rest of the athletes have to leave the room while the fights go on. So what's gonna happen is these are basically tryouts to get on the new uh, one championship. I guess we can call it a farm team. It's uh, a team where people can you know, try to compete and win a contract for one championship. So the most similar thing we could really think of is it's kind of like a farm team in baseball. So we'll be doing a little bit of the video. Obviously we can't come to you with any of the results because that's safe for the TV show, but we are gonna get a little backstage access so it should be a lot of fun. Big shout out to one championship for making this possible. Lauren, Rich Franklin, everybody else for letting us come in here. Let's see, uh, let's see some fights. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in. So this is extra special because this is the first episode of Thrive Life Active, which is my fitness and podcast, or more video. Rich, of course, was also on the very first episode ever of the Thrive Life podcast, where I was talking to him in Singapore. So, Rich, let me ask you, uh, we're in Bangkok right now at the uh, Bangkok Fight Lab here. Yeah. What brings you to Thai, well, Asia this time? Because you're still based out of the United States. No, 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 no. Oh, you're, yeah, you're in I Singapore. Am, I am in Singapore. Oh, okay. So, I, the work for one championship has just brought me to this side of the, the globe more consistently. I'm, I'm over here more okay. than I am in the States now. So, gotcha. Okay, uh, I did not know that. Yeah, stationed in Singapore. So, we one, we started this this uh, this league, one, one Warrior Series. Okay. And basically what we're doing is we're going out and we're scouting talent. Our, gotcha. our first stop, our very first stop was here at Bangkok. Okay. And we came to Bangkok Fight Lab. We made an announcement online, sent out the, the invitations, and we had a really good turnout. Yeah, yeah, a so very far. good turnout. Yeah. Today. Excellent. Yeah. So what exactly? So what is it for the people that don't really understand? What is it you're doing? Because it's a little bit different. Okay. Um, so what what we're doing is we're looking for uh, basically this is a grassroots effort okay. to find some developmental talent, somebody who maybe they're not quite ready for the global stage okay. at one championship. Yeah. Gotcha. So what I'm looking to do is uh, get them involved in one warrior series. Okay. They can come to my organization, and this is an organization where it's meant to pass you one direction or the other. You come into this organization, if you're successful, you're going to move on to one championship. There's okay. a six-figure contract on that. Very nice. If you're not successful, then obviously you will leave the organization. So how many, in theory, would make it through? Is what? there a number of spots or whatever? No. Or no? There's, there's no set number of spots. Okay. Uh, I can, at, at any time, I can sign somebody the, a contract to one, okay. the, the, the six-figure contract. Ideally, what I would like to do is bring somebody in here. I'm looking. What I'm looking for is the talent who is they're just like at that cusp. Yeah. And they, they need just they need to bridge that gap okay. between maybe uh, you know some some low level professional fights mm -hmm. and actually moving up. And this is a place where they can th that platform where they can get that experience that they need okay. and actually make that push to the next level. So how long has this whole thing been in? I know you're starting the tour now, but when did you guys kind of come up with this idea? Like was it your like how did this? Thing come about. Uh, I, you know, one championships. They've always worked with different, you know, organizations yep. and, and the, the, all the countries that we go to. And we're always. I mean, it, we have we have a network of people. And we're always looking for talent. Okay. So we just finally said, look, we need a systematic way of doing this. Mm -hmm. We actually, in the past, have held tryouts a couple times. Okay. Yeah, I've heard about a those similar before. a similar system like this where we. We, we have contestants or applicants come in and try out and mm -hmm. evaluate them and, and sign them accordingly. But instead, now we can sign them to a, a developmental league to help them prep for one championship because it, they're just there's a lot of talent that's in that middle ground. Yeah. Are there any particular now? How many weight classes are there altogether in one championship? There's uh, seven. 
And you have girls fighting too. We do. So you're looking for guys and girls. Yeah. So there are quite yeah. a few girls here today. Um, now, how many cities is this tour going through? Did you say five or six? This, so this first cycle, we'll hit, we'll hit five cities. Possibly okay. six. We may end up adding one. So okay. Don't hold me to that. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, <laughs> so we, we have five cities on the docket right now. Okay. And that'll be our first cycle. And then everybody that we sign mm -hmm. will then end up competing in an event. Okay. Then we'll move on from there and we'll just we'll repeat and we'll choose five more cities to go to. Some of them may overlap, like we may end up coming back to Bangkok yeah. in two or three months or it may cycle through that we come back another time. Yeah, because next stop's Manila. I think Correct. I heard you say, yeah, yeah. Now, um, let me ask you a question about this then. So, one championship has grown a lot, even the last two or three years. I remember like for Bangkok, there was one last year. I think one year, the year before. This year, for 2018, I think, they're scheduled for three. Yes. What's the growth been like as far as cities go? I mean, for to go from really none three years ago to three in one year seems like a very big growth. And now you're in China as well. Correct. True, yeah. Yeah, we had, I mean, we had a really successful event in Shanghai. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see, I mean, you can see the growth of this company in, in all measures. Like, if you look at like some of our like some of our broadcast metrics, some of our social media metrics, like on, yeah. on that side of things, if you look at like what's happening internally with the company, the way that we're hiring and, mm -hmm. and all those kinds of things, and then if you look at the number of, of events that we're doing and how often we're coming back to cities and okay. just expanding, so all around, and it's just it's it, the, the company just continues to expand. It's about keeping our athletes active. Nice, and you seem to work really well with local gyms too. I've noticed there I, always seems to be a lot. You guys do a lot. With some organizations, they're they just kind of you know they do their own thing. You guys seem to work really well with different gyms as you can run. Like right now we're in the Fight Lab and I know you're going to Fairtex or something on Sunday. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. Now let me ask you, because I know you gotta wrap up because you gotta get going. Just what's the difference between Asia and the US when it comes to fighters? What's your kind of overall vibe? Like? The, the, the difference, you said that like there's just one difference. Well, like it's, <laughs> it's one, some of the one biggest single, what is the difference? What's the one biggest difference? Fights sometimes are short. Um, <laughs> joking, yeah, it's a joke. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, let me think, you know, uh, I, I, there's, there, this is what I've seen since I've been at one championship. <clears throat> when I first started working here, the gap uh, because because um, this this whole martial arts movement on this side of the of the world where you're mixing the, the wrestling the mixed the martial arts side yeah it's 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 a newer concept mm -hmm, and sure. so you have people that are coming from a, a traditional background and you see the competitors here today I see uh, a lot of a lot of applicants that come in that have really strong Thai backgrounds but what I notice about like practitioners of Muay Thai for example is that they're, they understand concepts like how to bridge. Like yeah. a good Muay Thai guy is difficult to hold down in the guard yeah. or to hold down in the mount oftentimes because they know how to bridge from doing all the all the clinch work that they mm -hmm. do. But technically there's like some stuff that's just just technically missing. Yeah. And you can see over the wrestling has never been a big thing. Here exactly. Either, so yeah. But I mean even even down to like a lot of the jiu-jitsu techniques, like they'll explode and they and they're good at doing what they're doing, but sometimes mm -hmm. in that position they may not know why gotcha. they're doing what they're doing. But okay. as as over the years I've seen this gap just slowly, slowly, yeah, slowly. So, all, so that, that skill gap is really getting yeah. caught up. And I, I think the big the big difference if I if I had to choose if I had to choose his one difference, one. I would say that uh, over here, in, in, if we're making a comparison or contrasting um, you know, athletes in the East to athletes in the West. I would say that, that everybody here is more entrenched into some sort of very deeply into a traditional art. Oh, okay, so it's you more know, so, so everybody's more into the, like a karate. Or either a karate or a Muay Thai or a, a left way or okay. something like that. So they're entrenched in that art. And then it's the skills from that art that end up carrying them through. Yeah. And now they're just getting to the point where they're starting to blend things. Yeah. Properly. And actually talking about that, it's kind of interesting that you will get athletes here that are into like say Muay Brang or some of the more fringy sort of martial arts mm -hmm. that you don't hear about in the States a lot. Yeah. Now I also heard somebody say, I believe it was Victor once, who said that Conor McGregor, a guy like Conor McGregor would not do well in one championship when it came to his attitude. Right? Would you say that? Would you say I've noticed that the uh, one championship fighter seems to be a lot more polite. There seems to be a lot more respect amongst fighters, and it's not so much of a bad mouth for each other. Yeah, I mean, look, I, it's. <laughs> I have <laughs> put him on the spot. I, I have mixed emotions <laughs> about this. I uh, and I agree. There, uh, things like humility, respect, and honor. These are these are, you know values that you learn from martial arts, like traditional martial arts. Even mm -hmm. when I started, I originally started in a traditional 
uh, Okinawan karate. Okay. And these are the kind of things, like, you know, when you ask a parent, like, I, what do you want your kid to learn from martial arts? And they'll say something like discipline. Yep. Like, there's always some value attached to it. 100%. And these arts, like karate, it comes from Japan, or mm -hmm. Okinawan karate, or Muay Thai, it comes, yeah, you know? And so Korea. oftentimes, that's, that's the reason why people on this side of the planet get involved in martial arts. And so the people that are watching, the fans, yeah. they really take to these, these, these type of athletes. Okay. Athletes that, that show discipline, that show humility or, or, or you know, respect and defeat and things like that. And, that, and that, that transcends and translates really well to our audience. Okay. Now, last question, because I know you got to go, everybody's calling you. Where can people find out about, like, what, what's going on here today? Where can they catch up and see it? Is it going to be on the One Championship page? Is it, like, oh, you mean the, 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 yes, the content? Yeah. yeah. The, actually, the plan, we're, so we're, we're, we're cutting all this, and the plan is to actually have this broadcast on our with all our video partners. Oh, okay. Very yeah, nice. So we'll that's television. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, very nice. Well, cool. Thank you again, Rich. Always gives me a few minutes of his time. It's excellent. And it's great that I could have you on the first video as well as the first audio of Thrive Life. So, cool. Thanks a Pleasure lot. Pleasure being here. I hope everything me. goes well. Thanks for having me again. No problem. Thank you.